Hello, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics in Domain 6, specifically focusing on vulnerability assessments and penetration testing. This is the second of three mind map videos for Domain 6. I have included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Every system has vulnerabilities. Vulnerability assessment and penetration testing are an important part of testing a system to look for these vulnerabilities, to identify, classify, and prioritize remediation of the vulnerabilities. Vulnerability assessments and penetration tests are very similar and start out exactly the same way, identifying potential vulnerabilities and reporting on them to understand the potential impact to the organization and prioritize remediation. In vulnerability assessment, once a potential vulnerability has been identified, we skip straight to reporting. In penetration testing, we identify potential vulnerabilities and then we attempt to exploit those vulnerabilities to verify if the vulnerability truly exists and can be exploited and thus eliminating false positives. Vulnerability assessments tend to be faster and more automated, but generate far more false positives. Penetration tests are slower and more manual and have a much higher likelihood of negatively impacting a system, but they provide a much clearer picture of the security of a system. Here is the process we go through to conduct vulnerability assessments and pen tests in generalized terms. We start with reconnaissance, which is a passive activity. The organization cannot detect anything at this step because we are gathering publicly available information from sources like job postings, LinkedIn profiles, and DNS records. Enumeration is active. This step can potentially be detected by the organization because in enumeration, we are enumerating systematically walking through IP address ranges and ports to look for live systems that are offering services. Vulnerability analysis is where we determine the exact version of a system and identify potential vulnerabilities that could be exploited. We'll talk about how banner grabbing and fingerprinting can be used to identify the version of a system in a few minutes. If we're performing a vulnerability assessment, then we skip execution and go straight to reporting. In a pen test, however, the execution step is where we attempt to exploit any vulnerabilities we have identified, actually break into a system. And documenting findings is all about reporting on vulnerabilities identified the potential impact of the organization, how they should be prioritized, all of these sorts of things. An important part of reporting is also about tailoring reports to various audiences. Now let's go through some testing techniques we can use. We can mix and match these different techniques to achieve different types of tests. We can simulate an outside attacker or a malicious insider as examples. Perspective is about where the ethical hacker is performing the test from. Internal means the testing is being performed from within the organization's network, simulating the attacker being on the inside. External means the testing is performed from outside the organization's network, simulating the attacker being outside the firewall, typically out on the internet. There are a couple of major approaches we can use in conducting tests. In a blind test, we give the ethical hacker very limited information on the system to be tested perhaps just an IP address. The ethical hacker is blind. Double blind means not only do we not give the ethical hacker any information, we also don't tell the organization's security operations team that the hack is occurring. Double blind tests not only what the hacker can get into, but also how effectively the organization can detect and respond to an attack. Knowledge is all about how much information we give to the ethical hacker. In zero knowledge or black box testing, the tester is given zero knowledge on the system and must rely on publicly available information and whatever they can deduce. This simulates an outsider trying to break in. Zero knowledge and blind tests are the same thing. In partial knowledge or gray box testing, the tester is given the knowledge of a user, potentially even elevated privileges on the system and some basic info on the system and network architecture. This makes the testing more efficient. 
Full knowledge, white box, open box, clear box, whatever you want to call it. This testing is where the tester is given full access to the source code, full credentials, and detailed architectural documentation. White box testing is much more focused on going through the source code in detail. There are a couple of different types of scans we can perform with vulnerability assessment tools like, say, Nessus or Rapid7. A credentialed scan or authenticated scan is where we give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log into the system being scanned. A credentialed scan can take a much deeper look into the exact configuration of a system and thus help eliminate false positives. It can also be helpful with baselining and compliance activities. An uncredentialed scan, as you can probably guess, means we don't give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log in. This is more of a simulation of an external attacker and what vulnerabilities can be identified from the outside. A critical requirement in identifying vulnerabilities is knowing the exact version of an operating system and application, because different versions are vulnerable to different things. Banner grabbing is where we intentionally get the system to generate some sort of error message, like say an error 404 message, file not found, on a web server. And looking at the error message to see if the version number of the system is listed. Systems should be configured not to show this information. Fingerprinting is far more subtle. By either passively monitoring network traffic going to a system or actively sending a few specially crafted packets, we can carefully evaluate the exact structure and contents of packets, how they were created. Different versions of systems will craft packets in subtly different ways, allowing us to fingerprint to determine the exact version of a piece of software. When reporting on vulnerabilities, there are a couple of different important numbers that should be included. The CVE, or Common Vulnerability and Exposure Number, is a unique identifier for each vulnerability. And a public database of all these vulnerabilities is maintained. Each vulnerability that is being discovered has a unique CVE number assigned to it. The CVSS, or Common Vulnerability Scoring System, is a standard for assessing the severity of a vulnerability. From zero, which means meh, all the way up to 10, which means everyone should be running around screaming. That's obviously not the official measurements, but you don't need to know them for the exam. Finally, false positives and false negatives are important challenges we need to deal with. A false positive is where we identify a potential vulnerability, and upon further investigation, we realize there is no vulnerability. So we've spent a bunch of time chasing something that wasn't there. False negatives are far worse. This is where a vulnerability exists, and we don't identify it. We're blind to the vulnerability. And there you have an overview of vulnerability assessments and penetration testing within Domain 6, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I'll provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, and all the best in your studies.